Welcome back. From a health perspective, is fasting actually good for your body? What sorts of changes does your body experience? We're going to answer all of these burning questions and more with our guest, Carly McEnany, founder of In Home Holistics, an organization that focuses on female fitness, personal training, and nutrition. Carly is a certified personal trainer, a longtime fitness advocate, and a registered nutritionist. Welcome to the show, Carly. Thank you. So we're talking about fasting today, and uh, you know we talked to Dr. Shabir about sort of the spiritual benefits of fasting. I want to talk about um, the sort of the physical aspects of fasting. So, uh, from a nutritionist, fitness perspective, is fasting uh, good for you? Absolutely, fasting is good for you. Um, it has many benefits with regards to your physical health. Mm -hmm. uh, one of the things that I like to talk about is the. Um, the lack of energy that is required to go to your digestive system. Instead, that energy can be sort of exerted in other areas of your body. So this helps a lot with um, building your immune system, regenerating new and healthy cells. Um, it also helps a lot uh, with our alertness and our mental acuity. Um, so we do actually get a different type of energy from fasting. Um, on a cellular level though, uh, when your body is sort of um, taking itself away from digesting and processing food and assimilating into the bloodstream, you're able to get a, a good um, amount of time and energy used for your cells mm -hmm. so that you can de start detoxifying. Um, and when that happens, um, a lot of the times we use our stored fat as energy. When you release that as energy, you're also releasing a lot of toxins in your body. So um, all around, it's good for a lot. It's also really good for mental acuity and also for almost emotional and mental health. Um, a lot of endorphins are released when you're fasting. So those are your feel-good hormones that are essential for you know, having energy, being positive, and wanting to do good deeds. So all of these things sort of fuel a really good sort of system mm -hmm. and cycle in your body. So you said, you said an interesting point. You said that we have more energy because yeah. less energy is being used on our digestive system. Then why mm -hmm. is it, I'm gonna ask you the mm -hmm. question, why is it that when you start fasting though, there is, an, there is an element, I mean, I know for me, I feel really tired yeah. at work and I'm just like, it, in the beginning it's really hard. So what, what's happening there? Is it that the body's getting adjusted to this new System? Yeah, yeah. Uh, often when, as a nutrition, as a nutritionist, I, I've often told people who are starting a cleanse or a detox, and some of that involves fasting uh, outside of Ramadan fasting. Mm -hmm. um, your body sometimes goes through a healing crisis, and that's time sometimes where you feel worse before you feel better. That's often those toxins starting to be released into the bloodstream. And also a lot of it has to do with our overconsumption of caffeine throughout the rest of the year. Uh, we often okay. go through a caffeine withdrawal, which can definitely wear and tear on your body because it's a stimulant. Mm -hmm. And it has an effect on your adrenal glands, which are your stress uh, organs, right? So you want to make sure that you start to wean yourself off that caffeine a little bit more coming up to the month of Ramadan in order to have a much better start of your fasting so that you don't get those lows as much as you would. Um, but a lot of it does have to do with caffeine. So just as we talk about preparing, um, mm -hmm. how do you, so let's start with caffeine because I know a lot yeah. of people, including, and this is probably a selfish question, mm -hmm. because I need my coffee in right. the morning and if I don't get right. it, then eventually I'll get a headache. So right. what's the best way uh, to wean ourselves off? I mean, I know uh, right now Ramadan has already started, but for people who are still getting into the process, what's the best way to wean ourselves so off? So leading up to Ramadan, I would say if you're a two cup or more a day, mm -hmm. you need to start cutting that down to at least one cup a day. Okay. And then slowly try to see if you can prepare yourself a little bit as a, a, as, as a practice that we're supposed to do is to sort of fast um, a little bit before Ramadan begins mm -hmm. in order to get ready. You're sort of getting your body and mind all ready to start fasting. So I would suggest that you start the weaning process and slowly get down to one cup to zero cups a day before and also practice some fasting before. Mm -hmm. That would help a lot. Okay, so that's very helpful. Let's get into the shopping list for Ramadan. Mm -hmm. What should the shopping list include in, in Ramadan? 
Uh, lots of produce. Okay. Okay. Because with produce, you can do many things, and you're going to focus on nutrient dense foods. Okay. So you're going to. So what is that? Nutrient dense means um, well. If you take, uh, if you want to compare, if you want to have a slice of white bread and a green salad over here, you're looking at almost a deficit in nutrition with mm -hmm. the slice of white bread versus an extreme amount of nutrition when you've got a, a colorful salad on the other. Um, one might think the bread's gonna fill you up and give you more sustainability, but it's actually the opposite. Really? So you wanna make sure that you're getting um, lots of nutrition. Not to say you should just live off salad, mm -hmm. okay? Yep. <laughs> but lots of produce is where a good place to start, okay? okay? Um, you also want to make sure that you're getting all different colors of the rainbow in there to make sure you're getting lots of antioxidants. This will help your body heal while the fasting is taking place. It'll so also what are antioxidants? I'm sorry, you're talking to someone anti who doesn't know much. <laughs> antioxidants are uh, found in foods, um, like vitamin C is an antioxidant. Okay, um, so oranges are good? Sure, oranges, but antioxidants are also found in almost all fruits and vegetables, especially okay. the bright colors. You mm -hmm. have everything from lycopene, which is found in mangoes and tomatoes, and then you have uh, bioflavonoids that are found in citrus fruits and berries. So you want to make sure that you have lots of antioxidants, helps your body deal with the processes that are taking place when you're fasting. And you also want to make sure that you've got um, healthy sources of protein, right? Mm -hmm. um, so everything from uh, everybody is going to know what their usual protein source yeah. is, but you want to make sure that you're not just turning to your beef and your chicken and your lamb or goat, right? Mm -hmm. You want to make sure that you're actually turning towards maybe some plant-based proteins, especially for Suhoor. So what are some examples of that? Plant-based proteins would be nuts and seeds. Mm -hmm. uh, plant-based proteins would also be beans and legumes. Okay. Um, and then you would get your um, non-vegetarian but non-meat uh, meat. sources okay. would be uh, Greek yogurt is a mm -hmm. great source mm -hmm. and also eggs, Okay. right? Mm -hmm. So um, you wanna make sure that you're getting a combination of sources of protein tofu, so a soy-based uh, protein is also mm -hmm. a plant-based uh, that you can supplement sometimes. So you wanna make sure that you have a balance of everything. Yeah. Okay, mm -hmm. that's very helpful and, and very good tips on what our shopping list should include. What should our shopping list or like, you know, if there are time when you're breaking your fast, what should it not, what are the things that you say absolutely must, no guys stay away from? I'm almost uh, scared about the answer. I <laughs> would say anything that is refined, highly refined and processed. So something, what I mean by that is something that is taken from its natural, normal, state upon the way it was created mm -hmm. and completely stripped down to just sort of an empty caloried food okay, okay? so my um, reference last time was white bread yep. same thing um, anything that's white mm -hmm. uh, ha is that's not the way that it was created right so yeah. um, Every time you get into something that's white, like white flour, which a lot of foods during Ramadan, I hate to say it, are made from. Yeah. Okay. I'm not lie, yeah. Um, the bran and the germ that is stripped away, you have now taken away all of its fiber. You've taken away all of its vitamins and minerals and all of its protein. So everything that sort of allows your body to receive the carbohydrates at a slower rate mm -hmm. so that it doesn't have a, a fast rate shooting into your bloodstream gotcha. okay. uh, is gone. But all the vitamins and minerals and proteins and fiber that work in other ways in your body too to help you digest, to help you with just basic metabolism um, and elimination is also stripped. So, so is whole wheat okay then? Because you said white. Whole grain is definitely something that you would want to to, to mm -hmm. switch it up with. And I would say that, you know, if you're not used to um, cooking with anything but white flour, yeah. is, to, is to start with baby steps and just maybe start combining half whole wheat, half gotcha. white flour, mm -hmm. right? And uh, ground flax seeds are something you can find in any grocery store that would actually add a lot more nutrition into that as well. And they act as a binding agent. Uh, ground flax seeds are found almost anywhere now. Um, you can also buy them whole and grind them yourself, mm -hmm. but it gives you a lot more nutrition. 
Okay, interesting. Yeah. All right, I think yeah. this is a good eye opener for a lot of us, including me. Um, what about there are a lot of people that have health issues, right, in Ramadan and even outside mm -hmm. of Ramadan. Um, so maybe let's talk a little bit about that. So maybe let's start with diabetes. That's a sure. big one I think that a lot of people go through. Yeah. So what's your advice in terms of a food, a meal plan for that? Sure. So if their doctor has allowed them to fast mm -hmm. and, and it's totally fine with them, I would say that you want to look for, again, I'm going to repeat, nutrient-dense foods, so whole foods, yeah. right? Uh, as much to their natural state as you can. Raw is always good because you're getting a lot of live nutrients mm -hmm. that your body can readily use and readily absorb. You don't have to break it down. Um, actually, you get a lot of enzymes in there which are um, essential for digestion. Uh, another thing is to make sure you get a lot of fiber okay. because when you're getting complex carbohydrates, right, those are the slow releasing energy. Complex carbohydrates, you're talking about things that have white flour? No. Com well, wheat in its original form is mm -hmm. a complex carbohydrate. Okay. So whole grains, mm -hmm. um, you're looking at everything from beans okay. and legumes. Yeah. You're looking at um, any kind of grain, really. Mm -hmm. Brown rice, okay. Quinoa is mm -hmm. another one. Um, uh, steel cut oats or any oats for that matter, but steel cut are the best. Mm -hmm. um, so this is going to give you a slow releasing energy gotcha. throughout the day, not a rise and a fall because mm -hmm. that's another thing that triggers this fall where, where we were talking about earlier about caffeine is that is the when your blood sugar kind of shoots up and then all that insulin is produced and secreted, it drops your blood sugar back down way lower than actually you might have started it out oh, with. Okay. So that's another um, thing that you have to look at is slow releasing carbohydrates in that you get all of your whole grains. So you get the B vitamins, you mm -hmm. get the fiber, you get the protein. Those slow everything down in terms of how it's distributed into your bloodstream. Um, what about, can I just ask a quick yep, question? Sure. What about granola? Because I know a lot of yes, people Yes, so, like okay, so that's oat based. Okay, so that's okay. It's good to make your own if you can. Mm -hmm. And if you can't, um, just read the amount of sugar on the label. Yep. So there's often a lot of sugar coated on that. it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So uh, ones with nuts and seeds again, are a lot more nutrient dense, but they get that, um, you get that um, more protein and more omega-3s in there often, mm -hmm. which again, help bring the glycemic index down. That's okay. the rate at which sugar is kind of distributed mm -hmm. into your bloodstream. Okay. Yeah. Super helpful. Yeah. Um, what about people who have issues generally with high blood pressure? Uh, I would probably go back to the same thing mm -hmm. um, in that. I would also add for diabe diabetics as well is make sure you're getting a good amount of healthy fats and healthy protein in there. These will keep you fuller longer, keep your blood sugar stable longer, okay? Um, it's well, just, and what are healthy fats? So healthy fats are essential fatty acids okay. and monounsaturated fats. So monounsaturated fat, our perfect example is olive oil. Okay. okay. Oh, okay. Right. So that's why olive oil is so good for you. Mm -hmm. um, and um, another one would be, so for omega-3s, it would be fish oils. It would be oils that you find in nuts and seeds. Mm -hmm. Okay. And it's also found in leafy green vegetables. Oh, interesting. Mm -hmm. Okay. So all healthy fats. Right. Avocados as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So um, also there's some medium chain triglycerides that are found in coconut oil, which is also very good for you and very filling. Mm -hmm. So, and helps stabilize your blood sugar. Interesting. Yes. Okay. So Pro you can just kind of eat that with like, you can just put in your salad and eat it, right? Yeah. You can sprinkle nuts and seeds onto your salads. You can put them in your smoothies. You can put them on top of your oatmeal, mm -hmm. um, for suhoor, for example. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah, definitely. And then what about this one, I think, is a common for a lot of people. Uh, they experience constipation issues mm -hmm. or just, um, you know, uh, digestive issues. So how do you, right. uh, what's, the, what's the trick to that? That goes back to the avoidance of the refined and processed wheat flours. Mm -hmm. um, that can act as sort of like a glue and water sort of in your oh, gut. Okay. And it can back things up, especially when we lack hydration sometimes. Mm -hmm. yeah. So when we're not drinking water in the day during the fasting hours, uh, that has an effect on your digestive tract and slowing it down. Mm -hmm. So I would avoid those things and yeah. I would also make sure, and this goes back to um, blood pressure, make sure that you are hydrated. Okay. Um, hydration is essential for elimination 
and it's also essential for blood pressure. Mm -hmm. So hydration as in water and hydration as in electrolytes. I'm sure some people have heard of the word electrolyte. Those yeah, are basically I've just mineral that. donators that mm -hmm. sort of help with the, you know, the different pumps and such mm -hmm. within your cells in the water, uh, within your cells. So you wanna make sure that you're well hydrated and go for more fiber. And if you can get any brisk walking in, okay. uh, a little bit of exercise can also um, help relieve the constipation. It can help relieve and reduce your blood sugar levels, mm -hmm. and it also helps to relieve and reduce your high blood pressure. Awesome. Yeah. Okay. And just as we wrap up, what about like um, you know fitness goals that people have? People who generally have a tendency to work out. Yeah. Would you recommend that uh, during this month? Um, if they have no health issues and they have prior been exercising, I would say for maintenance reasons, absolutely. You want to maintain all that hard work mm -hmm. that you've been doing, right? Yeah. You don't want to let any of that go. It's, yeah, it's, it's not worth it. Yeah. So my suggestion is that you go at a lesser intensity and you go at a lesser amount of time, mm -hmm. okay? okay? So you want to reduce those things and you have to pick a time to exercise that is works for you, works mm -hmm. for your body, works for your schedule, works around your kids, so that if you are able to go for a brisk walk, let's say after the hard, mm -hmm. that um, you know you are able to possibly take a, a short nap if you need to, um, if, you, if you fall into that. Mm -hmm. So just make sure that you plan it um, properly. You may have to do it in non-fasting hours, which is fine, yeah. and you can tend to go a little harder during non-fasting hours. But uh, my suggestion would be just to sort of listen to your body and see what works for you. I think this has been super helpful. Thank you so much, Carly. Thank you.